So you want to make an engine. Well, I'll teach you. First, you're going to need a base. Then, you're going to need a crankshaft. Now I'm going to use fading doors tool. I'm going to make it so that I can fade these. You don't need a fading doors tool, but it makes life a lot easier. I'm going to use the color tool, fade my crankcase. I'm going to go to easy precision, move first prop to second. I'm going to put the crank shaft inside of the crank case. Now, I could have put it in the middle. However, if the pistons are too close to the crank shaft, the pistons will glitch through to the other side. Part of making a good engine is building it correctly. So now we're going to go to wire. We're going to get thrusters. We're going to have bi-directional. Works out of water. Works underwater. Force multiplier 1. Force minimum and force maximum are a lot. So we're going to put two thrusters down there. Next we're going to go to wire detection. I'm going to put a GPS chip down. Try to put it there because I'm hoping you're building this engine exactly like I'm building it. Next we are going to need a number pad input and that is toggle is checked, value on is 1, and the key is 5. Next we're going to need an advanced input. Toggle is not checked. Increase is 8. Decrease is 2. Maximum is 100. Minimum is 0. Start at is 0. Change per second is 10. Alrighty. So we have the basic shapings of an engine here. We are missing a flywheel. So now we're going to go to transportation. We're going to find a round prop that we like. You don't necessarily have to go to transportation, but I am. So I like this small wheel here. Next, you have to hit the key left of one. The name is escaping my mind right now. This will open up your developer console. If your developer console does not open, go to options, go to keyboard, advanced, and check enable developer console. Okay, that prop that we wanted, we're going to right click it, we're going to go to copy to clipboard, we're going to open our developer console and type wire underscore expression to, that's one word, underscore model, and then space, we're going to hit control V as in vehicle, that is the paste command. This is going to change how our expression looks. You can do this with any prop. Just right click, copy, and then do what I did. Useful to know. Alright, so now we need to put our flywheel in the middle of our crankshaft. Normally the flywheel is on the outside, but I like it on the inside. I'm using precision alignment for this. You can use easy precision. Just don't move it with your mouse. You need this to be exactly center. Alright. See how easy that was. Okay. Now we're going to wire this up. We're going to wire advanced GPS vector vector on to the number pad input throttle the advanced input. Now we are going to use our debugger tool. We're going to click this. We want B, not bearing, we want B to be zero. If it's zero, you're good. So now, also for the thrusters, we want the front one to be wired to T1 and the back one to be wired to T2. 
Next, we are going to get out our rope tool. Rigid, rope length one, or rope width one, head length zero, force, force limit zero. We are going to go from the center of piston number one to the underside of the engine. You can see right here as I faded. Now, we are going to rotate the crankshaft 180 degrees. One, two, three, four. It appears I've forgotten to freeze my pistons. You need to do that. Okay. Okay, now we're going to do the rope tool to the other piston to the bottom, just like the other one. So now it looks like that. Alright, now for the constraints. We're going to get out our weld tool and hit R on the pistons because the thruster tool automatically makes a weld. Now we are going to get out our no collide tool. No, right click on everything. PPS, piston, piston, crankcase, crankshaft, flywheel, overhead input, advanced input. Next, we are going to smart constraint the flywheel to the crankshaft. You can use weld tool. Next, we are going to get out our axis tool. We want friction to be zero. We're going to go from here to the middle of the crankshaft. We're going to go from here to the middle of the crankshaft. It's important that you have an axis on both sides. It makes it a lot more stable in my experience. And then, we're going to fade the crankshaft and we are going to go from the same spot to the middle of the flywheel. From the same spot as this side to the middle of the flywheel. It should be relatively finished now. I know we want sound, so I'm going to go to a sound emitter. I have a sound that I like quite much. I'm going to just slap that on there. I'm going to no collide that. I'm going to go to wire, wire advanced, A to numpad input, pitch relative. To SP. Lastly, the pistons need constrained. We're going to use easy precision slider. Don't just slap some sliders on there, because they're going to bug out. Easy precision puts a couple of ball, advanced ball sockets on it, so it has less of a chance of spazzing. So we have our slider, easy precision slider. We we'll go from there. Okay, that should be it. Now, I'm going to explain to you what this chip does. Because I don't want you to just copy the engine, I want you to learn from me. What this does is if B is greater than 0 and less than 180, thruster 1 equals throttle times on. That means that if the crank, if the crank is here, or 180 degrees from here, this this thruster right here is going to be on. What B is, is the bearing of the crankshaft. Now for the next line. Else T1 equals, this should be a negative, negative throttle times on. Because when this pushes down all the way, when this piston pushes down all the way, 
it's going to need to come back up. A real engine only has pistons forced down because gasoline goes into the chamber, it ignites, explodes, forces the piston down. But in Gmod, we have the luxury of multi-directional thrusters. So we can have the thruster exhibit force on the way back up. Not only is this more power, but it makes the engine stable. And we like stable engines. Now, the second piston, thruster 2, is exactly opposite of the first piston. So all we need here is T2 equals negative T1. That means that when T1 is positive, T2 will be negative. And when T1 is negative, T2 will be positive. Okay, so let's see how our engine works. You can see it went up into position there. I'm going to use a debugger tool so I can show you the RPMs. As you can see, I was maintaining 700 RPMs there. This is a fairly good engine. Would it be able to push a large amount of mass? No, because the uh, mass of the pistons isn't that great. Also, a couple things that I did not mention. This GPS unit has to be, this is very important, it has to be in a line from the flywheel. It you can't have the GPS over here and have the flywheel over here. It won't work. You can't have the, the flywheel over here and the GPS over here. It can't work. If you stick your flywheel on the end, put the GPS above it. 